welcome to a special Halloween episode of the Garage to Life show. It's October 28th, 2022. Tonight's episode is brought to you by the bottlers of Dr. Pepper. You know, it's not a toothpaste or a root beer. It's the light and lively taste that you'll cheer. Take it from Dick Clark and Vincent Price and Donna Lauren. Dr. Pepper is the choice of uh, the now generation. So welcome to the Chamber of Horrors where Gratu Orloff resides. So we will now enter the spook house of Dr. Gratu Orloff. Just a few days left till Halloween. Right, Drew the dog? Well, when the night falls, when the shadows become deep and black, the silent pall of evil settles on the earth. Who dares to search? Who dares to see what walks in the night? If you dare, welcome to Nightmare. spot my friends one place upon the earth where you are surrounded surrounded by the mementos the souvenirs the things that remind you of the high points in your life such a place is dear to one is it not this room is such a place to me for this is my trophy room this is the place I like to be the most. But you have never been here before, have you? 
and have never completely tooled my collection. How thoughtless of me. Come, my friends, and allow me to show you around. Here in this corner is the place which is the dwelling place of the mad fool. I am sure you remember his hideous face and his horrible deeds. <laughs> And this, my friends, this small fragment of a laboratory should certainly be familiar to you. For it is with this very equipment that the great Dr. Frankenstein first stumbled upon his, his nefarious discovery. Do you recognize the one within the chamber? His face should be familiar to you.
pronounced Namor, not Namor. For those of you that just watched the Silver, I'm sorry, the uh, Black Panther trailer. And he's from Atlantis. This is probably my favorite of the EC Mad paperbacks, Inside Mad, the third one. It just it, somehow it resonated with me the most as a kid. Have you met James Bond 007, a complete assortment of Ian Fleming suspense classics? So, pick up all your latest copies. I hate the modern world so much that for decades I've strived to recreate the past and um, I try to live in an imaginary world that no longer exists but it exists here where you can go into a general store and be greeted with this assortment of paperbacks. So perhaps I'm insane. Perhaps I'm mad. But as darkness falls, as the, the shadows become dark and black, the silent pall of evil settles upon the earth. Who dares to search? Who dares to see? what walks in the night if you dare welcome to the nightmare of dr gratu orloff brought to you by great pet soda your local bottler yes indeed <coughs> Let's go into the library. Vampirilla never can stay up. She's modern action figures. Let's just prop her up against the moon. If you know what these things are called, please let me know down below. I bought these in second grade and I'd like to know what they're called and who manufactured them so I can obtain more. Anyway, it's October 28th, 2022. I've um, 
been moving into this house since April, and this is the current state of my collection. Um, I've unpacked, and um, mostly everything's unpacked. There's still some stuff in the garage. I still have books stacked up. Um, I may have some bookcases made, or perhaps buy some bookcases. Then I'll be able to put all the books up. There's a talking crystal ball. Does it still work? Um, will the Republicans beat the Democrats in the midterm elections? Ah, uh, so the battery's dead. Oh, the battery's been taken out. Oh, well. So much for the talking crystal ball. Here are those Martian dolls. that They, they put them out to compete against uh, Monster High dolls. And they were amazing, but they wouldn't sell. So Target had a lot of these on discount. And I thought, this shit, what happened to the front of her visor? Um, shit, motherfucker. Ah, pardon my language, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what the hell? Um, her helmet fell off. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I thought these things were amazing, and they were on sale for virtually nothing because I guess they were too weird for little girls to play with. <sighs> you think Funko Pops will put out another one? Uh, when Trump runs uh, next time, kind of doubt it. It's just about Christmas time here, so we're all ready for Christmas. Okay, we're ready for Christmas. That's my father. That's my grandfather. picture of my father in high school and my mother and a picture of my mother another one Herman Munster who's not related to me but should be and the tiger woman here's my wife with the magazine uh, with the comic book rack you just saw in the other room and here's my wife as a younger girl Let's uh, head on down to the basement because I just put up all the Halloween masks. So we'll go investigate down there. All right. 
So we will enter to the spook house. These are all people that have visited here in the basement. There's Betty Page, Martina Beswick, Dita Von Tees. Here's Lily Von Seer. I'm sorry, Lily St. Seer. What the fuck am I talking about? It's Lily St. Seer, goddammit. Butch Patrick. Joe Biden moment, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we all get old. Here's Gunnar Hansen. Raquel Welch, another Lily St. Cyr, June Wilkinson. Lily St. Cyr had an offer in like movie star, some movie collector's magazine, that used to, the newspaper, where she'd send you three autographs for $10, something like that. So I sent off and they never came. So I wrote her a letter and, and said, uh, you know, uh, what happened? And uh, she sent me a real apologetic letter and sent me extra photographs and sent me her own phone number in case it ever happened again. Actually, I think I ordered from her twice and the same thing happened both times. I had to remind her because she was getting a little older. But it's all right, you know. And then some, some movie poster uh, dealer was wanting to, to get her phone number from me. I said, uh, no, I don't think so, you know. That was just sent privately. So, uh, anyway. So, anyway, this is the uh, basement, ladies and gentlemen. Where, um, at some point in the somewhat near future this won't be such a mess still unpacking down here um, but soon this will be a vintage pinball arcade at least that's the the plan I'm still unpacking my Fort Apache set Rick Shannon pull out some figures here's some random figures let's put them up why right, should I drop one Okay, pardon my language. So, um, these are the basement bedrooms. So, here's another, um, uh, let's put that over here. A little ladder. Here's a, this is a play set from 1967 Marks. Another uh, Indian with a tomahawk. There's a... Okay. So I pulled some... Some of these guys, uh, cavalry guys, but I need... Didn't pull any horses. Alright. Let's put this guy in there. guy rushing to the rushing to the fray let's see if I can get some horses out of that uh, box this is the original box Fort Apache was sent to me like in 1971 from the Sears catalog this look some of my original drawings as a kid can you see that that's my drawing and I wrote Fort ha, it says Fort 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 are there not any there's no horses in here, which is weird. The horses must be elsewhere. Here's a boot. Where is this boot? Oh, that boot goes there. Oh, here's a horse. Here's a horse now. It's not in an action pose. And here's an astronaut that we can put up here. He uh, came in a Tesla time machine. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now we've got one mounted guy. I'll put that in. Put that out here. 
All right, it's a work in progress. Okay, let's go in the other room and see the Halloween mask I've been hanging up. Okay. There's the golden bat from Japanese television and Richard Nixon and a vampire woman and a mummy, wolf man. Uh, Democrat voter, that's what they all look like. Nancy Pelosi. Here's a creature from the Black Lagoon, having a bad day. The wonderful Superman clock that doesn't seem to work anymore. This one I've uh, had since like fifth grade. Another Democrat. That looks like, I've seen people uh, com uh, that work at comic book stores look just like that. And I've seen people that work at comic stores that look like that. I sort of got it. Lone Star Comics, which is now mycomicshop.com. One time back in the 90s, it must have been the 90s, maybe early 2000s, I went in the, one of the Lone Star Comics locations, and uh, the clerk was this muscle-bound... Uh, clean-cut guy and on his arms were unbelievable scars like uh, from sword fighting and I realized oh this is one of those SCA guys is that a nationwide thing SCA it stands for Society for Creative Anachronism and they hang out at Renaissance fairs and they dress up like it's you know 700 years ago and they uh and some of them will get out and joust, or they'll have sword fights. And so this guy had actually fought with the weapons that you see in Savage Sword of Conan. And, uh, you know, was working in a comic store, because that's where you obtain sword and sorcery paperbacks and comic books, you know. So, it's weird when you see a, one of those tough guy comic book people. It doesn't happen very often. Here's a cool vintage uh, mask that i got to get hung up. The, the, oh, this one still has the, okay. This one is a duplicate of that one, actually. What is, what is this behind it? Oh, and this one's a little bit different. This is kind of a, like, it had a hair disaster and just crying tears because of it. And a fly guy. I gotta hang these up. This is a work in progress. So. I'm working every day at making this place uh, a cool place where you can visit, where you can hang out. Um, we're going to have some visitors next week. Some uh, comic book people are going to be visiting. I'll let you know after they've left who they are. Maybe you'll see them on the Grotto Orloff show. So that's something to look forward to. All right. Oh, let's go in this. Uh, thing. I've got, let me show you the arcade games I've got here. I've got Aquacade from the late, shit, from the late 1940s. So it's a very vintage one. There's Tropicana and Royal Flush. And then over here is a mid-60s kind of uh, section of the arcade. There's Fun Park, Domino, and a Go-Go. If you see the movie X-Men First Class, they take the uh, teenage mutants and they have them in uh, like a prison cell. Uh, the government does, and they have a pinball machine in there for them, and it's... Uh, it's not Fun Park, it's Fun Land. It's the same machine, except one of them's an Attaball and the other one isn't. So anyway, um, you can uh, watch that movie, which is actually a really good movie. All right, this is the magazine I used to put out called The Sophisticate. And this was a best of issue. Lily Christine, and there's the spaceship ad on the back. Anyway, this is the this is the kind of shit I used to put out. 
Back in the 1990s, there's an article on Warren Comics. Yes. Okay, I was going to go in this room over here. Like I said, this place is a mess. But what can I tell you? I wanted to show you that um, you probably know this. A lot of you are now very interested in eerie publications. And for a while, yeah, here we go. Um, th this uh, company was putting out these uh, DVDs stealing the covers from Erie Publications. I doubt they got permission. A double DVD horrorama. And they have a double feature of uh, cheesy movies on the back. And see, they have a whole lineup of Tales of Voodoo where they uh, stole uh, the covers from uh, old Erie Publications. I don't know. No one's ever pointed that out. But, you know, I got tons of these something weird movies out here, you know. Like, uh, you know. <clears throat> it's hard to navigate with one hand. Down here I have these uh, VHS uh, Republic serials. I know I've got more of those ones that steal the uh, covers of eerie publications, but everything is not in uh, proper order yet. And I want to get rid of these fluorescent lights and put up some other kind of light, because I hate those, man. Um, a lot of horror movies out here. Oh, there's one now. Look. Uh, see, Terror Tales. And this one has the vampire and uh, death kiss. They, they did a good job packaging this stuff. They've got the moon monster there. So they, they marketed them as terror tales and tales of terror. So I guess if you try to search for Erie Publications magazines by name, you might pull up some of those DVDs by accident and wonder what the F. There's the whole series of the Adams Family and... Yeah, this is a uh... Oh, there's some stuff I've got to return to Jambo. They'll be getting back to him soon. I I borrowed them god damn, maybe a year and a half ago. It's really embarrassing. Um Let's see. What's interesting to show you? I might have the um, sounds a little high upstairs. I maybe need to turn that down a little bit because um, I'm, I'm gonna get my wife angry at me. She's trying to take a nap. Now here's a Forrest J. Ackerman video tape. Hooray for Horrorwood. Oh uh, boy. See down here sometimes I'll find things that I've been looking for that I think are lost because I don't come down here enough and uh, and I'll get all upset. I thought a ventriloquist puppet was missing and he wound up sitting right here on top of these 45 RPM records, which um, you youngsters call vinyls, but youngsters don't watch this channel. So there's no worries that some of you are going to be uh, using that word vinyls around here. Yeah, it's a mess down here, I know. But someday soon, this will all just be a figment of your imagination that it was so messed up at one time. So what else do you want to see on this amazing Halloween episode? I added some more Thang and Hulk figures here. I just added this Hulk and I just added that thing. This one was sent to me by Meyer Greenblatt. 
That's the reissue of the Aurora Hulk kit, except they made it larger. And, uh... Oh, here's another Halloween mask that I need to hang up in the other room. How about that? This was painted by a homeless gentleman. This uh, recreation of the cover of Hulk 121. It looks really good in black light. I know it's 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 kind of amateurish, but you know uh, it's really cool to help a guy out and also have some kind of cool art to hang on the wall. Um, yes, indeed. All right. So let's take this skull mask back to the other room. And uh, I need to get up, oh, I need to get upstairs before my wife murders me for having the stereo on so loud. Here's some, here's a Frankenberry mask I've got to get hung up. Let's put that up here. And a booberry. All right. Okay, so we've, uh, we're looking for Halloween stuff to entertain you since, but I don't really think of Halloween as a particular time. Uh, to me, I know it sounds cliche, but I think of all year as Halloween. And uh, all these little people running from monsters from 1950s movie posters. Here's a guy with a, with a gun and a girl running. I found these. Uh, they were all packed inside this Fort Apache box, and so I, I need to, uh, they, my mother-in-law was, when we were packing, before we moved, she put them in there for safety, and I had no idea, so now I need to move them where they belong. Every time I come into a room, I try to make a couple of changes, just so that I feel like I'm getting stuff done. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's see, it's a big mess. I gotta, gotta work faster, man. This is getting to be old. And it's kind of warm and toasty down here in the basement. put this bicentennial flag up over the door to the basement because it was letting sun in and sun is the enemy um, so what is this shit playing in here Of course, a suicide case is automatically excommunicated, so how could you be it? God damn, I'm in, I'm in trouble. I, had this, I didn't realize it was this loud. What is this thing? What is playing on my hi-fi stereo? It's 1973 Vampire's Halloween WKBW radio broadcast. And it lasts for 38 minutes and 22 seconds. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I should record this. I guess I will. All right, so. Got a uh, blank DVD-R in the... Uh, in the DVD recorder and I've hooked the I have YouTube the the Roku hooked into the DVD recorder so let's rewind this YouTube broadcast to the beginning and then press record I'm in the EP mode which is gives you about six hours on a disc and this sounds like it's worth saving and meanwhile this guy says 
What does it say in there? Whenever I think, I make mistakes. Boy, I... Isn't that the truth? Where should I put this uh, highly collectible sculpture? How about right here? Oh, shit. The elf on the reindeer fell. Ah! Anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it's a mess down here. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, head on up. Oh, here's a little Halloween thing I bought since I came here um, to Pennsylvania. We live here on Kensington Avenue in historic uh, Pennsylvania. Um, this little ghost holding a skull, I bought that last summer, this last summer. I was just hearing last night that Eisenhower met with space aliens and made a big deal with them. But in reality, they're not space aliens. They're actually um, from another dimension. And they are um, they are actually demons that have uh, bred with human women creating Nephilim, who are giants. And they are actually what uh, a lot of... Uh, Civilizations used to pray to, you know, like Zeus, the Greek gods, the Norse gods were all Nephilim. We're all um, half demons and half human. And so, or they were fully demon, uh, space alien, uh, uh, pseudo space aliens. That's what I heard. So it's got to be true because it was on YouTube. That would be kind of cool if, if all the ancient mythology was actually real real history. Oh well. Uh, I know that the granddaughter or great granddaughter, maybe it's the granddaughter of Eisenhower, is an interesting character. Her name is Laura Eisenhower. Let's see her on the uh, Oh, this is my wrestling clock. Some of you may be interested in that. It just said, rest in peace. So I don't know if that's this guy. I guess it's the, yeah, Kane that says rest in peace. The Undertaker is, when, when it's uh, his turn, he says, my creatures of the night will feast upon the flesh of your corpse. Which is a very fun thing for a clock to say. Okay, so down here, I'm going to put the people running in fear. From the big blue. There are people running in fear. The robot. There we got our, our torture victim. Okay. What a mess I've got up here, man. Put the astronaut that I found downstairs in the Fort Apache up here with the other space alien spaceship kind of stuff. Here's Flash Gordon. And let's find a good place to hang up the torture victim. I think there's one of these torture victims right in here in the guest bedroom. Yes, I'm correct. So where can I hang this guy? Oh, I see a place. We got the Wiki Watchy Pennant, the spring of the live mermaids in Florida. And there's a thumbtack there that uh, could also hold a torture victim. So that's quite wonderful. Yes, this is the guest bedroom on the third floor. The basement is counted as a floor. Get smart, uh, put up a sign is crooked. Yes, indeed. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Ah! Yeah. Just 
used to be an all-you-can-eat Mexican restaurant called Poncho's. I don't know if it's all over the country or if it's just in Texas. But the noises that Frankenstein's monster was just making are the sounds that you would make after eating at that all-you-can-eat place. Trust me, I know. All right. Oh, there's Halloween stuff in here, too. Although I showed it to you two episodes ago, but most of you probably don't watch that far into an episode. Um, I've been noticing uh, a drop in viewership as I insult CGC, I insult Venom, and Carnage, and Deadpool, and everything that people hold sacred. I, I just say, hey, I don't like anything basically after the Bronze Age. And uh, that, that, I think, hurts people's feelings. And I say I hate the entire world, and I guess maybe that's not a nice thing to say, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I guess I need to be nicer and talk about. There's no wrong way to comic collect. We're all, yeah. But I'm sorry. I just, I just can't fake it, man. I just. <sighs> I like the past. I like the old days, man. I like the old days when Sergeant Snorkel would take care of the enemy like that. Man, there's just too much light coming in here, man. How do we get rid of all this light? I can't stand it, man. Son of a bitch and bastards. Hold on a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, sorry. A lot of my time is spent trying to figure out ways to keep sun from coming in the windows. Sun, the accursed enemy. All right. What else is entertaining? Oh, I should take you into the bat room here in a moment. First, let's go in the comic room. See if there's any Halloween related stuff in here. This is a shit comic book holder um, that uh, was designed in the early 70s by Jim Steranko. You might have seen it advertised in some of the old comics. I think it was advertised in the Atlas Seaboard comics. So there it's got a horror side. And uh, this is more of a superhero, generic superhero side. And then this is uh, a um, sword and sorcery side. I think that guy was named Talon, if I'm not mistaken. This was sent to me by Captain Strange Life, a replica of Strange Tales 73. Man, if you guys have an extra copy of Strange Tales 73 that you'd be willing to sell to me at a fair price, possibly. Uh, not that I have any money. What am I even talking about? Like, at a, maybe I could pay you over time or do some paintings for you. I would sure, since I use the name Gratu, it seems like I should really have a copy of Strange Tales 73. But I don't. I have a the 70s uh, re reprint, you know, of that story. You know, this picture, you see it all over the place. Uh, this kid reading these comics. There's actually, if you find, the original picture has a different kid's head. This one, if you look at it, the, the shading of the kid's head versus his neck is different. It, it's actually uh, someone glued Russ Cochran's head as a little boy onto this photograph. Russ Cochran being the guy that uh, took over all the reprinting of the EC comics in the 70s, you know, in those hardback volumes. Anyway, so someone glued his head on there. And you can find this picture, uh, the original picture with the original kid's head. But uh, anyway, that's only the front cover of Haunt of Fear number three. 
So, yeah, this is a. Uh, it's my childhood uh, glow in the dark mummy. So yeah, this is the comic room. You've seen this room a million times on the uh, on this television program. Um, at least I think you have. This closet is filled with all kinds of treasures. The Green Ghost Game. I wish I didn't. Someone hadn't done a tape pull on this thing at some point in the past. But this was a great game. I remember my older brothers playing when I was a little kid, and then. By the time I was old enough, that game had disappeared. So I got a, I got one on eBay years ago. So all kinds of stuff in here. Um, I built this Mr. Spock as a little kid, but this is a reissue. I've got to rebuild it because my Mr. Spock kid is long gone. Uh, this is um, got some one sheets here. There's a Spider-Man Halloween costume. Where's the mask at? Oh, there's the mask over there. I need to go hang that this stuff in the basement with the other Halloweens. There's a Halloween decoration. I hear horses outside. It makes me so incredibly happy. Um, when I hear, because there's cobblestone, it's a cobblestone street up there on Kensington Avenue, and uh, when I hear a horse and buggy go by, uh, I just think it's the coolest thing. I have so much respect for Amish people. Uh, it's like incredible, you know, to be able to live in today's world, because you know how much I hate the modern world. I think I, I respect someone that can live like that, and uh, live like it's Little House on the Prairie. That's fantastic, in my humble opinion. <laughs>